Reading is a beautiful place, but it's also full of wonderful people. We have business leaders, community leaders, faith-based leaders, all of them working towards a singular goal, and that's to make this a great place to live. I wanted to showcase these people, give their perception of the place that they call home. This is All Reading. Hey, Ryan Denham, thanks for coming in. Absolutely, yeah. great to be here. Thank you for having me. Came in on a Saturday. Came in on a Saturday. But you guys are open on Saturdays, so it's we are, work. We are, but closed on Sundays. You're, you're used to working. That's why I didn't call you in on Sunday. Closed on Sundays. Yeah, plus you'll be busy spinning on Sunday. You'll be. I will be spinning at True Ride. That's right, yeah. and hopefully I'll be right next to you. Sweating. I, uh, I, I missed last weekend, Yeah. and it's kind of funny. Um, so there was this point where Becky was like, let's go, let's go, and I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to go. And then all of a sudden, so I started going, oh, I'm feeling pretty good, and then all of a sudden this thing happened where when I would miss a day for something legitimate, like, oh, there's logistically that, I kind of like, man, I feel kind of bad. I didn't go ride the bike today. Like you feel a little guilty. Yeah. You're like, I should have been there. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a little bit jonesing for that, uh, that, that bikers. Is that what, I was gonna say Take bikers high. Is that yeah. what it is? So I went this morning, so I don't know about you. I treadmilled. Yeah. But like I get off the treadmill, you know, three and a half miles. I'm like, dude, I feel like my blood's flowing now. Like yeah. I can get the day started. Are we, on the treadmill, is that a run or a walk? That's a 6.8 Whoa, run. that's a run. It's like under a nine minute mile. Is that what I did? Okay. Yeah. I get, hey, that's legit, man. Yeah. I don't but know. I will go like, but here's what I do. I'll go for like three or four minutes and then stop for a minute. Go for three or four minutes, stop for a minute. Someone said that's better to do it that way. You mean way. full blown stop or you mean slow down? No, to no, like no, three like slow down to like a fast walk. Yeah, like what, four miles an hour? Yeah. I, uh, I don't know about runner's high. I've never had a runner's high. The Marine Corps made me hate running, but I have had a swimmer's high. And I think it, part of it's because you're holding your breath and you're exerting yourself. There's some combination of like, you come and out And then like pool. a release at the end? Yeah, and you're like, you're kind of lightheaded, you're feeling yeah. good, you're kind of, but I think, I think it's because, not just the physical exertion, I think it's because, you know, you're holding, that pattern of holding your breath and right. stuff. Yep. And, you know, we had Adam McElvain on, and he was talking about uh, a couple of different things. One of them was a local internet. Mm -hmm. We need, more local owned business so that the skin money, in the game yes the money stays here take the risk and you know, yeah a high speed downtown exactly which would be all the money would stay right here versus now with charter and at and i mean i know there's some I, i'm going to get bashed for this one i know there's some at t and charter employees here in town sure but, but the vast majority of the money leaves and so the more that we can i mean talk about uh you know everyone has an economic plan mm -hmm. The more that you can work to keeping the money in this area, that's a great economic plan. A rising tide lifts all ships. There you go. Uh, you've been in business, well, before you were born. Well before I was born. Well before you were born. So uh, our family business started in the mid-1940s um, at actually Pine and Tehama Street. Really? Is where we were originally a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And then in 1948, my grandfather started construction on North Market Street. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that was actually outside the city limits. The city limits ended at the Sacramento River. And he moved his DeSoto Plymouth dealership and body refinishing business out to North Market Street in uh, April of 1949. From there, um, dad gets involved in the business, business grows. I get involved in the business in 2001. Mm -hmm. And it's continued to uh, have some great years and some not so great years as the economy goes. It's the and, way it goes. Uh, here we are, uh, let's see, we're- 68 years, going on 69 years later? No, 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 we're- uh, Did I do my math 70, wrong? 70, we're 73 years. Someone needs to take night 73 courses 73 years. Okay, I was going off, I was going off when you actually built it, you, okay. Yeah, so I'm starting You're going from off being pine. a new car dealer in 1945, Plymouth to Soto, to where we are in 2017. I was, do, I was doing the whole at that location. Yeah. And you guys have another location though, you have a... We do, we also have a, a collision repair center. We operate Hertz Rent-A-Car, uh -huh. uh, two locations in Reading, and then we have a presence in Siskiyou County and Mount Shasta. Great community, we've That's had that since 2004. That's a small little community. Small community, yeah. small town. They need the sales tax revenue, the jobs are important, and uh, it's a fantastic community just like Reading is. Yeah, I haven't, I, uh, it's been a while uh, since I went up there and went, I went skiing a couple of years ago when we had that really good after, uh, I think it was, what was it, two winters yeah, ago? Yeah, I mean, we've had years up there, we've had five, six feet of snow in downtown Mount Shasta. So that wow. creates its own challenges. Yeah, I grew up in Alaska. I had more than enough of my share of snow. I like it, uh, it's, it, Mount Shasta's a great place to go for me in July. Outside, it is, and it's an hour drive and you're back home. 
Yeah. Makes it easy. Nice shadow of, a, of an active volcano and then you come back to get a little, a little further. Exactly. Away, so. Um, so you guys have been in business for 75 years and uh, your business spans quite a bit. I mean, you just said you collision and you do uh, rental, rental cars. cars and service, parts, tires. The whole vertical. The whole vertical. Very so good. our goal in business is that we, um, our focus on business is that we don't want to be just uh, one service to you as our customer. We want to be able to handle all of your automotive needs. And that's really starting with my dad and moving on to how my dad and I run our business together is we looked how are ways in business that we can continue to grow to provide needed services to our customer base that we already have and that continues to grow. So you know the, you know the importance of local business. Absolutely. What that has on the economy. What are some things that like are going on right now with Reading? Are, are, there, are there any mechanisms in play that you know about to help local business thrive? Or Well, you know, I mean, I've had the good fortune of being the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce with Jake Mangus for the last uh, now 11 months. Um, there's a real focus on the redevelopment of downtown Reading, making mm -hmm. downtown the hub of business. Mm -hmm. um, not just where you come during the day, but making it a 24-hour-a-day functioning, living, downtown, breathing city. Um, you've got the K2 development, you've got the McConaughey Foundation heavily vested in downtown. You've got a downtown specific plan coming that's looking to reopen Market Street where the downtown mall used to be. So there's a lot of things happening all at once and hopefully it can come together in a way that, that really strengthens our downtown and gets people to invest in downtown Reading. So there's plans in play. Are they are these like concrete? Like they're gonna happen? These are, these or are concrete. Still... Like the K2 oh, okay. development is the purchase of the Dickers building mm -hmm. by Daniel Knott and K2 Properties. Mm -hmm. um, McConnell has purchased the old police station. That's right. Is purchasing the Bell Lounge. Oh, very good. Uh, they're in talks on how to redevelop the California Street parking garage. Um, you've got uh, you know development clothing. You've got retail coming back to downtown. Absolutely. Um, so you've got people talking. How do we best develop the parking for downtown? with ride sharing and bicycle riding and walking. How do we tie that into our river trail system? So there's a lot of moving pieces and there's a lot of engagement by a lot of different groups right now, which for me is very exciting um, because people really have a vested interest in seeing the strength of Reading being the strength and growth of downtown. Just like your downtown. Exactly. You could be, you could have your office anywhere, but you obviously believe in downtown because you like the way it feels and the location, it's fun to be in a downtown. It's convenient. It, and there's an energy. located. You know, there's an energy. Yeah. Uh, seeing young people. Plus, you know, the downtown, I, I'm really interested in, I just heard about, I think Jamie, I don't know if he closed the deal, but I think Jamie Jamie Lynn, Lynn is in escrow on the Americana. Exactly. To um, do a development of um, a boutique type hotel setting, mixed use with uh, loft apartment living. Something about like uh, I think student housing, perhaps student or housing. something like that. So, and uh, I know this is outside of the the range of downtown, but again, talking about development of Reading, I, I don't. I, I should have. I, I should know a little bit more before I ask this question. But uh, I think Bethel is doing something with a university. There is. There's and a there's a proposal on the table that Bethel would build a almost hundred million dollar campus. That sounds insane. Uh, basically, straight across the highway from Simpson University. Now, I think that would be a fantastic development for our community, um, but what it creates also is a greater influx of students coming in to their mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. and those students all need places to live. No, absolutely. And we already have a highly impacted rental market um, for Reading. So there's gonna be some increased demand there as this project moves forward. Some of the hotels and motels that aren't mm -hmm. running properly, and we're starting to see that switch hands, like you said, with Jamie Lynn, and then I've heard. You had the Reading Inn. Yes. down on Pine Street, mm -hmm. you know, which they're working to find a buyer. And does that get leveled? Does it get redeveloped? You know, what happens there? But there's a lot of interest in making that work to rehab that project or make it something new. Socioeconomics, uh, a lot of the ills that we have is, is around socioeconomics. And so whenever you have an area that's, you know, financially depressed, mm -hmm. all kinds of things, crime goes up, mm -hmm. all kinds of things happen. And, and I'm trying to remember the real estate term for, uh, uh, absolutely. What is it? Oh, good lord! I hate that when you can't think of the, the word. The real estate term. The real estate term when something physically deteriorates and it brings down the entire local. It's uh, external obsolescence. No, 
anyway. I know what you mean. Yeah, the bottom line is that when people don't have money, they don't take care of things, suddenly that, that brings down the value and it's yep. it's like a disease that's, and the flip side of it is, is if somebody can come in and start the ball rolling towards developing, cleaning it up, that mm -hmm. in turn raises the value and bring, attracts more and more people. Exactly. That's, that's why I liked the, the, the downtown high-speed internet. I thought that was such a great, because I, I felt like that could attract outside companies to come in to come in and invest and make it yeah. financially worth it and then they're going to bring in high paying jobs they're going to bring in the engineers and the entire infrastructure around some of these uh, definitely like dot com or at least internet heavy based businesses yeah. and then that opens up a yeah, lot for like, businesses to say i have to have baseline i have to have that tool in my business no matter where i'm at and they're trying you know they they pay salaries that in reading families can live off of, mm -hmm. but down in the Bay Area, they can't. People mm -hmm. are, are, you know, four people to a, an apartment, but you'd come here and you'd actually be able to buy a home. Yeah, you want to pay salaries to people that can buy a home, that selfishly can buy a car. Yeah. I mean, those are all yeah. important things. That's the American dream. Yeah. And they, and they have things like a seven-minute commute versus, exactly. you know, a 57-minute commute. I will say that we're going to have to come up with a parking solution. Something's going to have to address the parking. I would like... Anything, you, you mentioned something about foot traffic. Something that promotes uh, people getting out and, and walking around and riding their bike. That's one thing I've kind of, um, I really like. I mean, this city is very rideable. It really is. It's, get, it's getting better and better. Yeah. Uh, this morning they had the uh, superhero run, the Casa. Yeah, the Casa run down yeah, at the they, Civic. Yeah, I saw everybody running down there. So there's putting trails here like yeah. that. So that'd be nice to, to know that that's part of the overall plan to get people out and about. Yeah, and I think you should see that downtown uh, parking plan come together towards the end of this year, is what I've heard. Okay. So it's being, they've hired a consultant and it's being studied and, you know, how's it work with opening up Market Street again? How's that flow? How do we open up some of, some of the side streets? They've done quite a bit. So you're saying that they're talking about pushing Market Street all the way through Push again? Push Market Street back through again. Oh, wow. So where it tees over here, that would push back through. I'll put you on the spot. Do you know much about uh, the behind the Lorenz, the park? There's been, I've heard 20 different things. Well, you know so yeah, that? Todd Franklin's trying to do a food truck with an outdoor uh, beer garden with mm -hmm. live music. And my understanding is there's been some um, protests by neighbors around that area concerned really? about alcohol and drinking outdoors. Well, I, I was over there. I used to have an office over there. I can't imagine. That's, I remember when we had Market Fest. I personally think right now it's a, it's a park that's not really maintained and that no. has a fence around it. And Let's try something and see if it works. Try something uh, that gets people down there and using it and uh, you know, has a tax base. I know exactly. everybody hates taxes, but that is how you, uh, that's how you get these sidewalks. That's exactly. how you keep the lights on. But ultimately, too, a safer downtown is having more people downtown. Absolutely. More you know, light. It goes more hand people. in hand. Yeah, more foot traffic. You know, talking about our business, one, one way I've been brought up in our business and uh, really learned this from my father at a young age as well as from my grandfather is that what we promote in our business, no matter what your role is, we don't really care what your title is. If there's dirt on the ground, if there's weeds to be pulled, if there's cars to be washed, you get out and do it. The job's got to be done. It's not about finger pointing and saying, this is your job, this is your job, that's not my job get the job done and move on. So, so and, and that's what we try to promote within our business. Well, your grandfather was part of the greatest generation. That's the, you know, the whole World War II, yep. the Great Depression generation. And they yep. came from an eighth grade education, uh, was very mechanically gifted, um, and, you know, basically, you know, just hard work and, uh, you know, doing the right thing. That was, was their how formula. he built his business. Yeah, their formula was like, uh, put your shoulder down yeah. into there the was grindstone. No, there was no marketing genius. There was no um, special logo or coupon. It was what? simply hard work. Yeah. And that's it, that. Hard, hard work, get in, you develop relationships within your community, um, which I think is extremely important um, with, with things that my dad's involved in, with things that I'm involved in. Um, you know, it's networking, it's giving back to your community. You know, if customers are going to come choose to do business with our business, the least we can do is continue to give back to our community to make it a better place. Yeah, reciprocate. Yeah. And it Absolutely. started, you started young. I mean, you were going into the, the dealership 
I, uh, we were talking about, there's a picture of you in a, as a little kid in a suit yeah. and you're going with uh, your grandfather. Yeah, I used to pal around with my grandfather and it was fun and, you know, I'd watch him and how he worked. I'd pal around with my dad and uh, I loved being around the business. Um, I got away from it and went into corporate America for about five or six years after college. Mm -hmm. And uh, corporate America certainly has its positives, but for me, I wanted to control more of my own destiny. Yeah. And, and being self-employed is really how you do that. Yeah. So that's what brought me back here in 2001. So being self-employed though, you've got the risks and the rewards. Certainly if there are risks and rewards. Um, you know, I mean, I view one of my most important roles being a business owner is I am ultimately responsible for making sure the 73 to 74 people that we employ every week get a paycheck because those 70 some people are looking to me for stability and growth of our business. So to young people that are thinking about what are like, you know, that might want to be an entrepreneur or start a business, what are some lessons learned, like the big ones, you know, hey. Uh, I will tell you it's always great to have a mentor in business. Um, you know, my father's my mentor in business and to this day I can uh, get together, sit down with them, talk to them and say, hey dad, I've got, I can go left or I can go right, which way should I go? And he said, well, here's the deal. If you go left, da da da. If you go right, ba ba ba. And chances are he's encountered in his career somewhat of the same challenge I have. And he said, hey, I learned from that and I did this. So really having that mentor person um, to be able to call on, not as per se a backstop, but as a person that can say, you know what, maybe I can help you make a decision that, you know, will not cost you as much as it could have if you went a different direction. Anything else, a mentor, so a mentor is a good one, but? Mentor is a good one, um, work hard. I think you have to be a person also to listen to people. Um, I think sometimes people get in business and they think they know everything. And the reality is, I don't think in any business, no matter what the size of it is, that you ever stop learning. So you've got to listen to your customers. You've got to listen to your employees. You've got to listen to your competition um, and learn from it and be observant, you know, and try to make good, rational decisions. Are there any, are there any tools that you have outside? Like, are you, are there any books that you, or that you've read? No, you know, I'm actually not a big reader. No? I never have been uh, a huge reader. Um, you know, certainly uh, with the onset of email and websites, there's all kinds of best practices and things out there. Um, but really, it's listening to our customers, what they want, what they demand. Um, I will tell you 20 years ago that the World Wide Web was a new thing in our business, and it is now the focal part of how our business is displayed and presented to people. Really? Sure. It's, even, even with you being such a, a local presence, the web is local, still... Local, well, but there is the local, and there's the people now that are out of market shopping into our market that we previously never had access to. Cars.com, Autotrader.com, Craigslist, uh, the list goes on and on. You know, and for as big of a challenge as that can be in our business, it's also a huge asset because I can now market myself locally, but it goes everywhere. Do you see, this, might, this one might be out there, do you see any changes in uh, or if you're even aware of like cryptocurrencies and like Bitcoin and yeah, stuff. like Bitcoins. I don't the, know that. I don't see. I don't know that much about okay. it. Okay. I didn't. What do you know of, about it? Uh, uh, I know that it's worth a lot more than it was six weeks ago, or know, a uh, week ago. Yeah. Um, but that's we could get in a whole discussion about uh, blockchain. I'd have to bring on a friend of mine, Brandon, to talk about uh, uh, blockchain and Bitcoin. I mean, I've never had anyone said I want to pay in Bitcoin. Okay, that's what I was getting at. I was like, are you even? You know, I read a thing the other day about a real estate transaction that it was, you know, over a million dollars down in Southern California. In Bitcoin. In Bitcoin. You know, it's, it's uh, the, the buyer and the seller want But isn't it. it like a currency that is always daily changing value too? Isn't gold? I guess so. Isn't Apple stock? Yeah. Isn't the dollar? Same difference. I mean, if you're, what was the dollar against the I pound I guess probably last just week not understanding it, it doesn't yeah. feel as stable. Yeah. I, I, it's, I don't it, know enough about it. I was just curious because I think the I think cryptocurrency uh, is the future. I think um, I think yes, I think it's part of the future. I know the future. Plastics, young man, go into plastics. Um, I think it is part of our future. I think it's going to be a 
play a much bigger role in the future than it does now. It makes me want to learn about it, yeah. just out of curiosity. Yeah, I, you know, it makes me, I'm still trying to learn. I'm like, can I market to Bitcoin users? Of course you can. You could, you could sell vehicles in Bitcoin and yeah. you'd open yourself up to people that have Bitcoin that would want to, you know what, that's what I'm going, I'm, that's my challenge is that uh, anybody who has Bitcoin and wants to buy a vehicle, that they contact you and um, I'll help you find a way to accept Bitcoin. There's a bunch of different payment gateways. There's a lot of ways to do it, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, you know. You know, we talk about local impact. I know that you're, you and SJ Denim are involved with a number of local we are. Uh, charities. We are, so we, uh, there's a couple of things we do and uh, the first one I wanted to touch on is called the Top of the State Scholarship. It started with my dad uh, almost 30 years ago and we do a, uh, uh, this will be our next summer will be our 30th year that we've done our uh, top of the state scholarship tournament. Um, but we're now to the point with the foundation my dad and I are, are involved with that my dad started. We have a board of directors, but we give away anywhere from thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars a year nice. to local Shasta Tehama Tehama County students for two and four-year scholarships. Very nice. So I think one of the areas that one of the one of the silos or measurements our area has lagged in is kids going on to higher education. Um, and again, higher education isn't for everybody. There's trade schools, there's a lot of other ways to go. Um, but I certainly think uh, higher education opens up a lot of gateways for kids. Um, so we've been heavily involved with that. Um, I'm heavily involved with our Reading West Rotary Club. Um, we put on our Taste of Reading event, which is That's every right. year. Mm -hmm. um, a huge fundraiser for our community, and then we're able to give money back to local literacy programs. Um, we support the trail system here in Reading. Um, we just redid the T.R. Wood Park in Sunset Terrace. Nice. Um, we've done the fountains across from the Safeway at Pine and Cypress. Oh, very nice. Um, so really just ways we can enhance our community locally as well as beyond, you know, the Rotary does a lot with international projects, you know, curing polio, uh, big picture things on the international stage. But you guys are also, uh, you were, uh, you've helped One Safe Place. Yep, right? so we do, uh, uh, this is our second year, we just kicked it off two days ago. It's called Fill the Fiat, and we're partnered with O2 Employment Services um, on doing a toy drive from now until November 16th, uh, basically to provide uh, non-perishable goods mm -hmm. and toys for One Safe Place to so, help those families out. So the fill the Fiat people come by? So SCA people down. can come in, drop off a toy in the Fiat, uh, drop off a non-perishable good, and then we will be delivering all those goods on November 16th to O2 Employment Services. Oh man, the only downside is this isn't gonna air before that. Oh, well that's okay. Well, I mean, there's a lot of other ways we can promote it. Yeah, you know, so. And there's other, you know, other things we do throughout the year. And you guys are a big collector for Toys for Tots. Toys right? for Tots, you, yep, we've done Gomer that in the Coast. past. Absolutely, um, so people can stop by. Yep. Donations. You know, beyond local golf tournaments, local causes, um, you know, there's, there's a multitude of needs in our community and within reason we try to help out where we can. I know that you helped me in the uh, Scott Stevens Memorial Golf Tournament. Where yep. we raised the Scott Stevens teams. Memorial Golf Tournament. That's right, because our team was woeful and you came in and yeah. you're, you're a pretty good golfer. Yeah. You're, well, that's... when I get to play. Yeah. So I don't play a lot anymore having two... Uh, Two now, well, one teenage daughter and one 11 year old daughter. That's right. So, That's my was. golf days are limited. But your hair is remarkably not gray enough to have two. On the sides, young... it's kind of starting to go there a little bit. Are you, you're not, it's not hair No, 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 it's, there's no you're dye. Not, you're not doing the little. No, there's no, no, no hair dye. The, the and I just got my hair cut, so it might have cut the gray hair down a little bit. Hey, my hair, I, I have a, it's a gray, silver, white, blonde. So people, you know, oh, you're, you're not going gray, and then they get closer. Oh, good yeah. lord, you're about 50% gray. Blends in with the blonde and white. So exactly. Just right. And uh, so I, I told the kids, we did the multiple sport thing. And I said, around eight years old, I said, you gotta okay, pick one. You gotta pick one. I don't care which one you pick. pick one. Gotta commit because we just can't pull this off. Plus, so all the our equipment. girls are all dance all the time, like four or five days a week. What are they Because we were trying to do dance, we were trying to do soccer, mm -hmm. trying to bounce in between, change clothes in the car. Mm -hmm. We'd always forget something. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're both at Reading Dance Center. Very good. So, yeah, that's what they want to do. Hey, it's great. Move your body. That's Get what, out. Be active. That's right. That's yeah. what matters. And stay away from boys. Be active. And stay away, away from, from boys. boys. And boys Not are a lot of evil. boys in dance.
So that's good. I, I, you might There's be, a few, but yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's like 95 to 5% girls. There you go. That's a good ratio. Let's keep it that way. I wouldn't mind 99 to 1. There you go. Yeah. 100, 100 to 0? Yeah. So there's something about having children that it, it sparks this, uh, this desire to provide all these things. There's so much security, yeah. you know? And well, security and, is defined in so many different ways, like, you know, making sure they're educated, they're fed, they they have a good future, their friends, yeah. the sports. It's We had Sabrina Schmidt on here and she was talking yeah. about, you know, when, when her kids were little and she was working, 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 and she realized, hey, wait a minute, why am I working? Oh, to make a better life with my children, I need to, you know, it's finding draw that, a line. I think it's, it's, it's challenging to find that life-work balance. Yeah, it's very challenging. And I think having children too makes your life it makes you stop and reflect more frequently. And because they're moving, because they're growing physically, it just it, it makes it more dramatic. Thank you very much for having me in today. No, thank I, you. I think, I think we are in a time that if it's not good news, it doesn't sell, which is really unfortunate. So it's great to see what you and your team are doing. Thank you very much. Is putting out good news, talking about the great things happening in our community. Because I think it's an amazing place to do business. It's an amazing place to raise a family. Um, and I think it's only gonna get better going forward. There's several uh, studies out there that show that there's never been a better time to live on this planet than right now, but yet people are convinced that it's the worst times. And it's because a steady stream of negative, you have a problem that's 5%. And sometimes you gotta just turn it all off, honestly. Oh. But not this one. This one you you, you watch you, this. You watch this. You, you turn, turn off the other off. stuff. You turn everything off so you can watch this. Right. You, you watch know? this stuff. This stuff's good. Yeah. And watch and and yeah. So it's never been a better time to live than right now, and this is a great place. It is. And you know when we first started talking about this and bringing people on, we noticed that it was a lot of the people that were from out of the area that realized this because they're coming from places they were like, hey, they're like, there's I real left crime that down area because I wanted to be somewhere like this to raise a family or start a business or you know. Yeah, get I mean, back to my community. Even in the, the busiest time of the day, you can get from one side of this, from the furthest side of this town to the other furthest side of this town in less than 12 minutes. Okay? I mean, that is the worst possible commute you could possibly have in, come on, 12 minutes. And that's, I'm talking five o'clock rush hour from Holiday Market, you know, at Placer to, yeah. you know, Sun I mean, Oaks. I, I've lived in other cities. I went to school in Stockton. Ooh, I lived ooh. outside Detroit, Michigan. Oy, wow, that's a who's who of. Wait, and then Baghdad? What was the third one? Huh? <laughs> You're the trifecta? You know? I mean, you go Stockton and Detroit and people go, ooh. Yeah, rightfully so. And you go, and those cities had their challenges, but I'll, I mean, Reading has so much to offer. So I'm very grateful to you and other yep. business owners Thank that you. Are, very, are cognizant of that and are doing something for that. Jobs lift everything. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you very much. Yeah. Absolutely, thanks.